Good morning and welcome to this week's Sunday worship. Let us open our time together in prayer. Lord God, giver of light and life, by your word you bring everything into being, the far-flung galaxies and the tiniest atom particle. You have given us a world to enjoy and to care for. Give us compassion in the use of its resources, wisdom in our stewardship of your gifts, and reverence for all that you have made. For Jesus' sake, Amen. We sing our first hymn, Hail to the Lord Anointed. Bill will now bring us our Bible reading, and the talk this week is given by Reverend Janet Eastwood. Janet and I uh, worked together at Holy Trinity Wavertree uh, a number of years ago. So for me, it is a personal uh, pleasure 
to have Janet join us in our YouTube service for this week. The Gospel reading is from Mark chapter 1 verses 4 to 11. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness preaching a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. The whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem went out to him. Confessing their sins, they were baptised by him in the Jordan River. John wore clothing made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. This was his message. After me comes the one more powerful than I, the straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptise you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. At that time, Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. Just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, whom I love. With you I am well pleased. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning. I'm Janet Eastwood, and I'm so happy to be with you this morning, with you all at St Michael's Alton and Holy Trinity Bickerstaff. Andrew and I worked together for a few years in Holy Trinity Wavertree, and it's a real privilege to be invited to be with you today. So let's start with a prayer. Day by day, three things of thee, dear Lord, we pray. To see thee more clearly, love thee more dearly, and follow thee more nearly. Day by day. Amen. Now Christmas can seem a long time in the planning for us living on this earth now. But the actual detail of it took centuries. Centuries had passed by and were punctuated with sometimes occasional brief words in the Old Testament and sometimes they took over the chapters in the books of the prophets, all given over to foretelling the birth and purpose of the Son. And then suddenly, a few hundred years on, a star appears. Magi start their preparations for a long, maybe two-year journey and a little later still, a young girl finds herself pregnant. A few months later, in a stable in Bethlehem, a child is born. Angels sing, shepherds gather together to see the child, and the Magi's journey finally comes to an end. Tens and hundreds of years of preparation after those first prophecies, and the angels and the shepherds disperse, the Magi having seen this miraculous little boy start their long journey home. A few centuries build up, followed by a week or so of celebration, and then the child is left with his parents to be loved, educated and prepared for what was to come. And when the time came for him to be recognised as the Messiah, it was John the Baptist who heralded his way. John, who had a developing ministry of his own, knew that this was really Jesus' time. He was to say that he was not worthy enough to fasten the sandal on Jesus' feet, for John knew that he was in the presence of the Son of God. Two thousand years later comes our time for preparation, of putting lights in the windows and outside in the gardens, checking the gifts are wrapped, the cards posted, and wondering if the turkey or the joint or the vegan alternatives are really right. When it actually comes after centuries of preparation, Christmas is assigned just one day. Immediately following on, the church has dedicated the next three days to Stephen, who was the first Christian martyr, on Boxing Day, and then that was followed by John the Evangelist, there to proclaim 
the joy, the wonder, the salvation of Jesus. And then on the Sunday after Christmas, the holy innocents, children who were massacred by King Herod. The glitz and the glory moved aside for the reality of life. As the glory of the birth of the Messiah and the joy of the angels, shepherds and kings in seeing this child in whom so much trust is placed, gives way into a life in a world that is both amazing, wonderful and brutally cruel. But doing all this preparation for one special day also acts as a reminder that the work of Jesus was centuries in the planning, millennia in the planning, right back to day one in the planning. And the work of Jesus must still continue. Christmas now reminds us that of the breathtaking gift of God, the Father in placing his Son into the hands of the humans, was so that he could lay the foundations for the salvation of the world before handing this task over to us. The preparation was spread over centuries. Jesus' ministry, around three years, and Christianity, now over 2,000 years. When we grow weary, as we continue to see a world in need, once again, we're reminded that God's plan is wonderful and timeless. This plan for salvation, however, needs the continuity of action and prayer from us, the body of Christ here on earth, to glimpse this plan evolving and to know that we have a part to play, which is every bit as, as important as those of the angels, the kings and the shepherds. For me, it makes this prayer, which is becoming increasingly well known, increasingly important. When the song of the angel is stilled, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and the princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, then the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring back peace among people, to make music in the heart. We have seen God affirm Jesus in baptism. He wants everyone to know that this is his son. We are not always good at seeing people's true worth and praising them for it. Neither is our society. In our prayers today, we remember those whom society does not affirm. Lord, help us to help them. We pray for the unemployed, for people who can't remember when they last worked, for the many who have lost the will to work. Lord, help us to help them. We pray for the homeless, that they might be kept safe and receive help, support and encouragement to begin happier and fulfilled lives. Lord, help us to help them. We pray for asylum seekers, that we will understand better what they have escaped from that we'll be, we will be more tolerant when we don't understand or when we see them only as a drain on our resources. Lord, help us to help them. We pray for people who use alcohol to fix their problems or at least to disguise them. We pray for people who help informally like street angels or formally in hostels or refuges. Lord, help us to help them. We pray for all the people we encounter in our daily lives, that we may see God in them and act accordingly. Lord, help us to help them. Amen. Let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We sing our next hymn, Songs of Thankfulness and Praise. just like to highlight some notices. Uh, we have made the decision to close both St Michael's and Holy Trinity for public worship because of the growing rate of infection in this area. But the good news is we will continue to produce these YouTube services for each Sunday. If you haven't done a Bible reading or a prayer within these services, then please uh, contact me if you'd like to do it. It's not that difficult. All you need is um, a phone, a mobile phone, and uh, you can send it by WhatsApp, or you can email it to me. If you need any guidance, then please let me know. But it's always nice to have some new fresh faces taking part in these services. We'll also continue to meet on Thursdays at two o'clock for our prayer meeting. Again, that is easier than you may think. All you have to do is go onto the websites, click on the link, and then you will be able to join us on Thursdays at two o'clock. Again, 
If you need any guidance, then please let me know. Another way of keeping in touch of what's happening is to regularly view our websites and also um, to be on the email list for our monthly benefits bulletin and also our weekly Roots at Home uh, sheet that we're sending out each week with prayer activities on relating to uh, the Bible reading for that Sunday. So please keep in touch and let us try new things as we uh, continue to support one another during these next few months. But now we are going to enjoy our gallery. Edward will now lead us in our special prayer for this week. Almighty God, whose beloved Son, Jesus Christ, went about doing good work and healing all manner of illness and disease. Continue, we ask, his gracious work among us, especially in all our local care homes and hospitals. Grant to doctors, nurses and all healthcare professionals wisdom and skill, sympathy and patience. Keep them safe and preserve them from all infection. Cheer, heal and bless the sick. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We sing our final hymn, We Three Kings of Orient Are.
Let us close our time together this morning in prayer. Lord, help us to be open to your prompting as we seek to discover what you would have us be and do. Remind us again and again that you have promised to be our guide and companion on our journey. Help us to look forward with renewed commitment and bless our thinking and speaking and doing in your name. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.